everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm Kiani for real. So glad you can join me today. I'm Kiani for real. Uh, thank you for joining me today. All you YouTubers. Uh huh. All you YouTubers. Uh, okay. I want to talk. I got a few things to talk about today. So let's get started. for joining me today and so I want to talk about um, first of all let's talk about managers what is a manager's job managers get things done through people managers plan direct motivate and control so in other words if you're working in a business and you may not be the manager but uh, you have uh, you may not be the manager but you have uh you know someone that is a manager you have someone that's a manager of your business and uh, so managers plan direct motivate control so in other words uh, excuse me, a manager may have a plan to you know what what are we going to uh, what, are, what are we going to do for the day what are our day-to-day -day operations uh, so a manager get basically a manager get things done through people so a manager has to make sure, um, you know, all the different employees are doing what they're supposed to do. So in other words, managers get things done through people. Uh, making plans, organizing resources, directing personnel, and controlling operations. So what, are, what operations uh, do uh, the managers uh, control? It depends, it depends on the company. It depends on the type of company that, uh, the type of business or company or whatever that, you know, that he's running, that he's, you know, the manager of. Uh, so, in other words, say for instance, uh, uh, McDonald's, McDonald's manager, uh, Burger King manager, any of those fast food uh, restaurants. Uh, what does a manager do on a day to day basis uh, in those type of, uh, you know, fast food restaurants? So, I would assume that. Uh, uh, manager has to, uh, in other words, you have the cashier, you have the cashier, when somebody comes up and they order their food, I assume that the manager has to uh, make sure that the cashier is, uh, you know, uh, you know, treating the customer fairly. Uh, I would assume that the manager will have to make sure basically that uh, cashiers are operating the uh, cash registers. And they're on their job. They, you know, they right there doing what they're supposed to do. That's their job title. They can't. They are cashiers. And then you might have some other uh, workers that may be uh, the ones that maybe just clean off the tables. So the manager has to make sure and see that they are cleaning off the tables, mopping the floors, maybe cleaning the bathrooms, and doing what they're supposed to do. So that's the job of the manager. So in other words, planning. Uh, plan, direct, motivate, control, and organize. So, planning, identify uh, attention, identify attention, uh, uh, alternatives, identify alternatives, and then select from, from among the alternatives uh, the one that does the best job of furthering the organization's objectives. Select a course of action, specify how the action will be implemented. So, in other words, uh, they identify uh, the alternative. So in other words, they have a, they may have some choices, and they want to identify the one that best uh, suits the organization and one that will get the organization help basically help the organization re reach their objective. Uh, so uh, and also have my uh, I always have my um, my my little la la drink that I have. So. Um, so uh, you can just pour it on in there like that. Cheers. And um, so that's the job of the manager. So that's the that's the planning. That's the planning. Um, see these are the balloons right here. I used to buy a big old bag like these, but I didn't have to open these. And I like to keep a lot of them blown up. 
so my grandkids come over. Mm -hmm. My kids and grandkids come over. And this is a bag right here of uh, 72. A 72. This is a bag of 72 balloons. So that's a. Uh, and also that's planning. So. And then we have uh, organizing. Managers organize. Uh, managers, they keep things running in an ordinate order. Keep things organized and in an orderly fashion. Directing and motivating involves mobilizing people to carry out plans and run routine operations. So in other words, direct them, motivate them, keep them motivated to do, you know, to carry out their job titles. So in other words, uh, like I said, you had a cashiers, uh, so managers have to be there to make sure they are on their job, you know, ringing up customers and, uh, you know, sometimes the lines may get long. I noticed that sometimes they have long lines, but the manager may come, open up another uh, cash register, tell you, you know, the workers to open up another cash register. Mm -hmm. And um, so... Those are the type of things of organizing, directing, motivating, uh, planning. And so I think the last one I have is controlling. Managers seek to ensure uh, that the plan is being followed, signal, signaling if operations are on track. Uh, it's the key to, uh, it's the key to uh, you know, effective control. To ensure that the plans is being followed. So managers are there to make sure the plans are being followed. So in other words, they have a plan. Uh, they have a plan. Whatever plan they have for whatever type of business they have. Like I said, Burger King, uh, McDonald's, Wendy's. Or you might have a retail giant like uh, Walmart, Kmart, uh, uh, Target. And whatever plan that they know that they're supposed to go by, their managers are there to, to control you know, those plans. Sometimes they, you know, you don't have a manager on site, then things can get out of hand. And just like uh, not having security, you working for an apartment complex, and uh, things can get out of hand. You don't have security. You don't have, uh, and then in areas you don't have, you know, you don't have the police. Well, you know, well, we didn't have the police to keep things under control. That's so. That's what managers basically do in a business sense. They are there. In those businesses and those organizations, planning, organizing, controlling, motivating them, these employees. Mm -hmm. So, um, so in other words, uh, if I'm running a business, if I'm running a business and my business is uh, Cheryl's uh, Television uh, Repair. Cheryl's Television Repair Shop LLC. Uh, I run a limited liability company, so just in case something go down, I won't have to worry about uh, the person, the people that's trying to sue me. I don't have to worry about them getting into my personal uh, uh, assets, my you know my checking, my savings, whatever personal assets I have. So, uh, so I'm running that business, Cheryl's. Television Repair, LLC. So no, I may need a manager. I might need one or two managers. So times when I'm not on board, I may be the owner, but uh, don't, I don't have to work in my business. I can have me a manager, a couple of managers. Depends on how many buildings I'm running. And it depends on, uh, you know, how big my uh, office space is. In other words, if I have a building... And say, for instance, the building is, uh, well, the building is 10 floors. I could have a manager for each, for, you know, two or three floors. Instead of having one manager uh, work on 10 floors, I can have a, I can have one manager do like three floors. And I, I got 10 floors, so I might need three managers. I might say, one manager, you got three floors to keep a track of because... In other words, I may have, what if I have uh, uh, employees on each floor? And I have 100 employees on each floor, 50 or 20 or 30 employees on each floor. So you're talking about 100 employees 
20 employees on each floor, so that may be about uh, estimating if I had 10 floors, you're talking about maybe a couple hundred, a couple hundred employees, and you know, in one building, I might need more than one manager. So, what are the plans? What you know, my manager's job would be to plan, direct, uh, motivate, control, and organize. So, I expect you to, as a manager to keep everything in an orga organized fashion, you know. I expect the plans to be carried out. Carried out. I expect you to direct these employees to do what they're supposed to do. I expect you to motivate them to make sure they're doing their job. Uh, so when it's time for payday, you know, they won't have no problem with saying, you know, my pay was docked because I, I stayed on my lunch break too long or I left on my lunch break. I went home early, you know, things of that nature. So those are managers. So like I said, my company, uh, Cheryl's, um, I could have anything. I could be running a cell phone business as well. Cheryl's, um, what's it called? Cheryl's, uh, um, the phones, um, Android, Cheryl's Android, uh, Cheryl's Android, uh, cell phone services, LLC. And, um, like I said, I might need two or three managers. I might just need one. It depends on, you know, it depends on the need of the, the needs of the company. Mm -hmm. Some companies need one manager. Some may need two. Some may need uh, two or three. It depends. So managers get things done through people. Managers plan, direct, motivate, control, organize, make sure the uh, the work day goes smoothly. So let's move on to uh, uh, let's talk about some tech trends. Let's talk about some tech trends. Okay, in other words, we run in a, I'm running a company. Uh, I have another company. It's, uh, it doesn't have to be a technology company, but the company that I'm running, um, um, I still want to keep up with the tech trends because, see, if I keep up with the tech trends, my, my employees... Uh, I, you know, my employees are there on a day-to-day -day basis and they are doing research and they are keeping up with the tech trends because we want to keep up with the tech trends to keep up with our competitors. I want to know what my customers are doing. I want to know what the, what are the needs of my customers. You know, I'm running a Cheryl's, uh, uh, I could be, you know, any kind of business that, you know, uh, what about, uh, I'm making jeans. I will say retail, jean jackets, jean stretch pants, and Cheryl's Retail Sales, LLC. I want to keep up with the latest trends in the market as far as uh, jean jackets and jean pants or stretch. Do I want to, do I want to have, uh, what type of inventory do I want to have? Do I want to have uh, just all stretch jeans or do I want to have uh, regular jeans, uh, you know, uh, what they call, um, uh, I forgot what they call those. Oh, Levi's. Your Levi's jeans. You want Levi's jeans, stress jeans. So what type of inventory are you going to have? I need my, I need to keep up with these tech trends to keep abreast of what's going on in the market. I want to keep up with technology trends, customers, customer trends, uh, consumers, customers, manufacturers, suppliers, uh, uh, my competitors. What are my competitors doing? What are they doing differently than what I am doing? Mm hmm so um yeah keeping up with those um and also keeping up with the tech trends i need to be able to make i have my managers i am the owner and then i have my managers um uh, working in my company for me we need to be able to make vital and important decisions so we need to keep up with the tech trends so we can pull in that the much needed information into our own into our organization so we can be able to be abreast of uh, what's going on out there in the market. Like I said in one of my previous videos, I want to, um, uh, I might want to put a new uh, product out there in the market. I might want to increase my, uh, expand my product line. In other words, I'm selling uh, stretch jeans. I might want to sell, uh, I might want to turn over and start selling uh, jean uh, dresses. 
women tights, you know, men, I might want to sell some men items, uh, men shirts, men t-shirts, Nike t-shirts, Nike, uh, Nike sweatsuits, you know, depending on what you're, you know, what you have a market for. So keeping up with those trends in the market, see, using information technology will be, will for sure uh, benefit the company because keeping up with information technology, um, bringing that vital information into the organization using technology. So, uh, you know, we might need a mainframe. We might need, uh, you know, depending on, depending on how big your company is, you may want a mainframe. Uh, supercomputer, supercomputers deal with uh, uh, massive uh, mathematical computations. Uh, we have mainframes that deal with uh, 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 multiple transactions at one time. And uh, then we have your mini computers, your microcomputers. We also... We definitely would have some some client client computers because my uh, uh, my employees would definitely be working on these client computers and they would have to access information and databases uh, from the server computer. So, like I said, those technology trends. So, uh, technology trends. We have all augmented and virtual reality. Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. And one. Uh, one uh, company, two companies, Big Screen and Paramount Pictures, they signed a multiple uh, year agreement to distribute uh, movies in uh, virtual reality. And we also, you know, we have smartphones, we have uh, facial recognition. So a lot of times, uh, sometimes when you buy these computers, and even on your cell phones, uh, we have, uh, they have the facial recognition. So in other words, your computer recognizes your face. Uh, and then some of them, you know, they do the fingerprints. I think with, with the Apple cell phones, you can do the fingerprint. And some of the uh, uh, Android phones, too, they offer that fingerprint uh, technology for uh, security. And um, so nowadays, you have to have security. You can't have, can't build a computer information system or can't keep these, uh, you know, can't have... Um, all these client computers and mainframes and supercomputers and microcomputers and mini computers in your organization or your corporation without having the proper security, uh, your firewalls and your, um, you know, all your, um, all the security that you need. You know, you have to probably hire your, uh, your security, your security networking person personnel would be the per people to, you know, to make sure everything's set up right. And um, and then we have uh, digital marketing. We have social media, data mining, e-casting. I guess in other words, a lot of these production companies, uh, you want to probably trial for a part electronic cast casting. You probably could sign right up from your internet. We have local uh, local search marketing, uh, pay per click. In other words, you can pay click. One, you want to click away from paying, ordering, you know, you go to Amazon, you can click and pay, Amazon.com. And a lot of these retail giants now, you can go right on their website and order. Uh, Walmart, Target, uh, Amazon, uh, Kmart, uh, all of them just about, you can go in there and click. And you go in there and click and you can just order, you know, order what you want. You have your... Uh, you can use, you know, you can just use your debit card or your credit card. And then we have uh, uh, Google Analytics. Google has a lot of items. Uh, Google Google Glass. Uh, I know Google Play. You know, you go to your phone, you can go to the Google Play Store and order. The, you can order apps. You know, download apps. So I know I have uh, my books. I have three books there in the Google Play Store. So. I go to the Google Partner Center and just, you know, I'm two, three clicks away from just, I can just view my book and I can see, uh, check on my sales, uh, everything about my book. I can go right in the Google Partner Center and check that or I can go to the Google Play. I go to Google Play, the Google Play Store on my phone, or even on the computer and check out my book. And also we have, uh, then we have the 5G networks, you know, we had, 
uh, I think we had 3G and 4G. Now we have 5G. In other words, uh, 5G networks use Federal Co Communications Commission uh, under uh, under the Trump administration that has announced to plan the plan to uh, bolster broadband in rural areas across the country. Verizon partnered with SNAP on 5G and augmented reality uh, features to experiences at Verizon's at Verizon's uh, I think I have another page oh here it is right here at Verizon's uh, 5G lab and using Verizon's 5G ultra uh, wide wide band network so in other words Verizon Verizon uh, teamed up with um, the five they teamed up with, they teamed up with uh, this company called uh, Snap. I think it's Snapchat. So Verizon teamed up with Snapchat uh, to build their, uh, basically to, I guess, uh, make sure when they're selling, Verizon selling their phones, their cell phones, you get, you get, you have, you buy, purchase a phone and you uh, opt in for your Verizon cell service. They are going to be putting, I think this came out last year though. They would, in other words, they'd be putting um, Snapchat on the phones. See, it says Verizon partner with Snap on 5G and augmented reality features and experiences at Verizon's uh, 5G lab and using Verizon 5G ultra wideband network. It will include premium sponsor sponsorship uh, placements within snap original uh video service so in other words verizon and snap chat will be working together so in other words when you purchase a verizon phone then some other phones will have a uh, snap chat already pre-installed so that's the and it will be 5g so in other words 5g a 5g network supposed to be faster and supposed to present uh present you know more benefits than the 3G and the 4G. And uh, so, and then I have, um, okay, it said the idea as Verizon explains is that the company's 5G ultra wideband, low lat latency, uh, fast speeds, and high bandwidth. So, fast speeds and high bandwidth. So, in other words, Bandwidth is the space, I guess, the uh, memory, the space. In other words, you have, you have, you'll be able to do more things with the 5G network. With the 3 and the 4, it's like, because I know I had a phone. I just had a phone recently, and the space was very limited. So it kept giving me a message. It was an Android phone. And um, it kept giving me a message and telling me that my space was running out. And so the next, after they told me that, in the next couple of days, I couldn't get no service with the phone because then I had it. I couldn't even get in to even delete no emails, uh, pictures or nothing. It wouldn't let me in to even do that. But I'm saying you t you told me that the space was limited, but you wouldn't. I couldn't even get in to even delete none of the you know things that I needed to delete to free up my space. So that phone was you know no more good now. I guess so. So that's Verizon and 5G. So um, let's see what else we have. And then we have a uh, okay. It says here yeah, uh, uh, augmented reality innovation through cutting edge applications. This will include landmark tech, which creates base entertainment experiences and portal lenses that take fans backstage so in other words this is also with verizon it says the idea is, the idea as verizon explains is that the company's 5g ultra wide bands low latency fast speeds and high bandwidth will enable snaps augmented reality innovate innovation through cutting edge applications so in other words verizon and snap snapchat they're you know they're they are partnering up together, and it says, uh, in other words, also when you go to a concert, uh, the features on your phone will be so good, 
it, you would think that you're, you know, backstage. So that's what they're saying. It says, uh, based on the entertainment experiences and portal lenses that take the will take the fans backstage at a concert or give sports fans unique experiences from their uh, seats during the game. In other words, you're watching the game and you have one of these Verizon phones with a 5G network. They're trying to tell you that uh, all this is just, uh, I believe it's just being innovative, uh, creative, being innovative, and, you know, you're making changes. And this is a way to pull in, this is a way to pull in customers. So this is what I've been telling, talking about in all my previous videos. You have something that's unique. You have something that's unique that another company don't have. So Verizon pulling in these uh Verizon pulling in these 5G network uh capability capable I would say 5G network capable phones partnering with uh Snapchat and that's being innovative that's being innovative so what about Apple does Apple uh have these same features on their cell phones so if Verizon if, if, if this is the type of thing that Verizon is doing with you know partnering with uh Snapchat and providing these Snapchat capable 5G uh, cell phones uh, are, are, is Verizon the only company that's doing it because uh, that that is a, this is a way to pull in more customers. So and it says uh, uh, Verizon intends to preload Snapchat or select 5G phones and provide exclusive offers through strategic programs uh, like Verizon Up. So that sounds good. That sounds good. So I might check out these phones myself. But um, it says, uh, yep, at the concert or give sports fans unique experiences from their seats. So in other words, if you have this uh, Snapchat capable uh, phone uh, with this 5G network from Verizon, you know, you get a plan, you buy a phone, you get a plan. So I don't know. If you have to particularly buy the phone, I guess you have to buy the phone from from Verizon, because it do say that uh, Verizon uh, Verizon intends to preload Snapchat on select 5G phones and provide exclusive offers through uh, strategic programs like Verizon Up. So in other words, if you purchase these phones from Verizon, you join a program called uh, Verizon Up. And then it seems like there might be, you know, so that if this is something, this, this seems like something that will be, this seems like something that could be unique that another cell phone company, I don't know if Apple offers this type of service or not. So I don't know if Apple has this Snapchat, but I know Apple has a lot of good features too with their phones. You know, you can sign up. I mean, you can, I think you can use your fingerprint to, you have to use your fingerprint to log in so no one else won't be able to log into your phone. So I never had a, I had an Apple iPhone, but it was an iPhone 4. So that didn't really have a whole lot of features, but I never really checked in. I really never checked out uh, the uh, Apple iPhone uh, 8, 9, and 10. So I know my son has the, I think it was iPhone 10. I think it was an iPhone 10 or 11. I think the latest one was the iPhone 10, I believe. But I think that's the one he had. Uh, I think he had he had that one. Uh, but I know Apple is supposed to be coming out with a new uh, Apple phone. I believe it's two ninety nine, so that's like three hundred. So, but they said it's going to be uh, smaller and it's going to be similar to the iPhone eight, I believe. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind trying that out. So, okay, uh, okay, other technology we have. Technology and innovation are bringing about drastic changes uh, to almost every aspect of our lives. Uh, already, we are surrounded by the continued innovation of machines and self-automated uh, means of doing things, and many developments that will that indirectly, I mean, that will entirely change the nature, the nature, uh, change the nature change the nature of, of the ways we are used to carrying uh, the routine, carrying the routine business of life. This will ultimately require businesses to keep up with new trends in the market, as I was saying, regarding technology to reap its benefits. 
So in other words, as a business, my business, uh, any other business that, you know, businesses that are out there, it's very important, as I said, to keep up with the trends in the market because if you don't keep up with the trends in the market, you're going to be left behind. You have, you have to keep up with the trends in the market because you don't want to be a business that's going to be left behind because if you're left behind, that means your customers will suffer. Basically, you might not have that many customers. The customers are going to run down the street to the... Uh, uh, Customers are going to run down the street or run around the corner or run way across town to uh, another business. So that's what they're going to do. So keeping up with the trends in the, t in, uh, in the market, uh, I mean, keeping up with the technology in the market and trends in the market. Uh, say, for instance, uh, uh, I mean, I could be running any kind of business or basically any kind of business that's out there. We have uh, high tech, we have technology firms, we have clothing, uh, giants, technology uh, firms, we have uh, we have food, uh, restaurants, whatever kind of business, you know, it's always good to keep up with the technology trends. Even if you're running the food, you know, you run the fran franchise, uh, McDonald's, Wendy's, uh, or I could be operating a restaurant. Say, for instance, I got about 10 restaurants or five. I have five restaurants. I want to keep up with the technology trends and also I want to keep up with, um, uh, Maybe food, food choices, food, food trends in the market. Uh, you know, in other words, because you can always uh, broaden your your, uh, your menu. In other words, you I could be a restaurant. Say, for instance, I'm a rest, I'm running a restaurant, and I have three, I have three restaurants downtown. You know, one downtown, one across town, one uptown, and and I'm you know I'm just. I have my employees, I have my cooks, I have my people to clean my floors, I have all my personnel set up, and on, on my menu I have steak, um, I have steak, I have healthy food, I have healthy recipes, you know, recipes that we make with avocados, uh, squash and greens and broccoli and healthy menus and all, and um, but we still fry steak and baked chicken and barbecue chicken and different menus, you know, so what if I want to expand my menu line? I still can do research in the market, qualitative research, quantitative research. Qualitative research would be pr pretty good because I can go down in the field, I can go out to different restaurants and sometimes people running restaurants, they go out of the country and sample uh, different types of food, and then sometimes bring those type of menus back to their own restaurant. And so, um, that's how that goes. So, businesses, uh, so I know when I was in, uh, when I was taking my courses up at, uh, uh, Strayed, down Strayed University, uh, then I took some online classes with Capella University. All we did was research and research and writing. That's what college is mostly. Research, writing. You do some research, and then you write your paper. You can do a report, you can do, uh, uh, let's say you can do a report, you can do just, you know, sometimes you might just have to do uh, three or four paragraphs, but sometimes you might have to do three or four page, three or four or five page uh, reports. And it depends on, you know, if you're doing a dissertation or you're doing a regular, just a regular uh, report. And um, so a lot of times we have to, we have to look up, we have to look up a term and then write, sometimes we had to write two, three pages on one term or one section of you know the book and um so it was very interesting and so that's how you learn a lot of things you know you have to put it in your own words and sometimes we had to stand up in front of the class and do our presentation so uh that was um college was very uh i would say entertaining rewarding educational um, a whole lot of things rolled up in one I say you uh you meet new people, you interact with your teachers, your professionals, and I mean your professors, not professionals, but your professors, your you know your your uh, your uh, classmates, and um so all right, let's get to the next one. So today, today smart capabilities. So in other words, uh, still talking about technology. We have uh, another thing I forgot to mention also. We have this, you know, you have your smart watches, your smartphones, and also we have the smart homes. You can make your home smart. 
uh, they have refrigerators now, and uh, you know, Alexa, she's in everybody's home. Alexa, give me a glass of juice. I don't know if she do all that, but <laughs> um, Alexa, you know, uh, Alexa, bring me a cup of juice, bring me a few million dollars. Uh, Alexa, uh, turn the light on or something like that, probably she could do. So today's smart, you know, to make, if I wish I could make my home smart, so I could sit right here all day and say, Alexa, do my work for me, do my job for me, and I won't have to work as much. Uh, Alexa, build my YouTube channel up for me, build my brand. Uh, uh, Alexa, bring me my dinner. Uh, <laughs> say today's smart capabilities I use for light bulbs, refrigerators, cars. Yeah, because you can make your car smart, your home smart. They have, you know, uh, your garage. Uh, you know, they have, uh, you know, these buttons and all these type of technological devices that can help you around your home. Like you said, your refrigerator. Uh, then they also have, well, they've been had this one for a while, the little, uh, uh, what you call, um, vacuum cleaner, the little circle, the little round circle, uh, Vacuum cleaner just rolls around your house and can vacuum up. You can just sit down and let him do the work <laughs> and uh, vacuum your floor up for you. Okay, this year, 2020, it is estimated that 150 billion devices will be connected to the Internet, to the Internet of Things. So somebody coined that term, the Internet of Things. So why not say Internet of Things? What about technology of things? Uh, so we also have that, the technology of things. All kind of technology, technological devices. So the Internet of Things, or everything basically they're saying, everything that connects you to the Internet. Even your car, you go, you can have Wi-Fi in your car. Even in hospitals now, where they've been had hospitals where you have some of those uh, devices, and, uh, things that the doctors need, nurses need, are connected to the Internet. So, and then the thing about that is, Anything that's connected to the outside world, the internet, the internet is a network of networks. The hackers can get in. Hackers can get in and shut everything down. Hackers, they get in bank. Uh, they, they have recently infiltrated, uh, uh, you know, into banks and stuff. And well, hopefully they won't get people's account numbers and all that. But that is, they have infiltrated in banks. Uh, uh, in a lot of these department stores they have and try to get people's credit card numbers and addresses and all that and it's just so security is a must so that's why I say you know change your passwords like I mean I would change my passwords at least every two months every two months you should at least change your password but encryption if uh, we can have our passwords encrypted then you know the hackers when they wouldn't be able to uh they couldn't decrypt unless they knew how to decrypt the encryption and then get the actual, you know, but so encryption would be a good method for encrypting your password. And instead of you making your password basic alphabetic letters, it can be a different code. It can be encryption. But you know, so they don't have it that way. But when they have you doing your password, they have us, we do our passwords in regular A to Z, A to Z, and then we do the numbers. But it would be better if we did our password and we encrypted our password. Say, for instance, my, I have a password. Uh, my password may be HOPE, H-O-P-E. Instead of H-O-P-E, I should encrypt down those letters. And that way... You know, that won't be a full password, but I'm just giving you an example. H-O-P-E is those are the letters that we use. Why not have everybody encrypt their password? So it will be, won't be as hard for the hackers to get in. So I can have, H instead of H-O-P-E, I can have a, uh, I can encrypt it to say, maybe, uh, I don't know, you can probably encrypt it to say, uh, maybe change the letters around or something. Instead of H O P E, you can say E O H E or or E E B B. I mean, however you would encrypt it, you know. But you know, I'm not just uh, I'm not the programming person, but 
so I would think encryption would be a better way to go with these passwords. Because we do it, we do it, when we do our passwords and say, you know, fix, say, uh, uh, think of a password that you can remember. So I'll be like, blah, 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 but, you know, so that's how they go. But I guess you can also, if you don't want making up the password, you should be able to do that yourself. I was just thinking about that. I'm like, you know what, instead of me using my regular letters, I can encrypt my own password and, you know, type it in myself. So, okay, then that's that. Then we have artificial intelligence, smart devices, you know, smartphones, smart, like I said, smart homes. You can make everything in your house smart. You won't have to get up and lift a finger. And now a lot of these jobs are automated. Artificial intelligence, that's those are the computers. You know, you have your robotics. You know, even hospitals now, even hospitals now, they have uh, their little robots. And I know up here in the hospital, um, Washington Hospital Center up here in Washington, D.C., they had little robots uh, rolling around in the uh, hall. So now they say probably in the next three or four years, uh, everything, most things are going to be automated. You know, even down to the bank tellers, they said that they want to, you know, cut down, you know, cut back. And instead of having, you know, a lot of people going to be losing jobs, automated. You go in there, you won't see a live person. You go in there to these computer, artificial intelligence, these computer machines, tap in a few little buttons. Because I know a credit union I was in, uh, Cross Town, um, called TEFQ, T-E-F-C-U. I was in there for a while. Me and my husband, we joined that credit union. But now, the last time I went over there, they, um, they don't have live, they don't have no live tellers. They got all the computer machines, and you got to go to the machine and put your money in right there in the little computer machine. They don't have no tellers no more. They had one lady at the desk. And I think they had two ladies at different desks. But when you go in there, you can't even, um, and, you know, I couldn't even get in my account last time I went over there because I'm like, you know what? Then I said, well, you know, I just closed everything down and opened up a new credit union account. They don't have no tellers over there at TEPQ. So I said, you know what? Cutting a lot of people out of their job. They had a couple ladies at desk, at desk, two different desks, and they, they, I guess they kept their job. So uh, then we have Alexa. We have the Ring doorbell, Ring doorbell technology. In other words, uh, you can see who's at your door before you even answer your door. You don't even have to answer. And then we have now they got the women's breast pump. Uh, they had this company called uh, CES. They have. Uh, wearable breast pump uh with an app so then they have a lot of more a lot more with uh, women's technology so you can check them out ces and i was just doing a little research before i came on my little uh my little presentation right here we have smartphone control skin care devices there's so many different you know uh and so many different uh tech new technology devices artificial intelligence uh Augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, so many different ones. Uh, then also the Air Force, uh, did a little research right here, said the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory Center for uh, Rapid Innovation, uh, AFRL, completed the initial flight test for a new, uh, a new unmanned aerial system with a, uh, let's see what it say, with a, uh, customizable suite of intelligence surveillance and renaissance tools for extended uh what's it extended missiles extended missiles that's what it say yeah see it says, it says extended extended miss miss missiles or something like that i think it's missiles uh-huh customizable suite of intelligence surveillance so I said the U.S. Air Force Re uh, Research Laboratory Center for Rapid Innovation, AFRL, completed initial flight test for a new unmanned. I think probably that was just the drones. That's probably just the drones. Air Force Research. Okay, so. Uh, okay, I talked about artificial intelligence. Uh, Alexa, we had the ring doorbell, self-drive. Oh, I forgot the self-driving cars. So we know Uber has the self-driving cars. 
And so, and then I think that's about it for the day uh, class. So I was just talking about a uh, little business. business. Uh, just talking about a little business. Talk about a little business on so running my business. Uh, I want to keep up with the technology trends in the market. I want to keep up with my customers. Uh, I want to keep up with, uh, you know, I want to build an information system or systems, make it plural. I want to use uh, with topology. I want to use, I have my networking uh, professionals, uh, you know, helping me. They're, they're constructing their, my computer information system, so I'm going to make it plural. Uh, I might use a ring topology, bus, uh, star, or the mesh. And so I will instruct my uh, uh, networking professionals uh, which topology setup I want. Uh, so I want to have that information system. I want to have more than one. I have a lot of employees. I want them to have one. I want to be able to uh, extract, pull that information into my organization. I need that information so my managers, as well as me as the owner, can bring in that vital and important information into my organization so I can keep up with the trends in the market. I want to keep up with what my customers are doing, with what my competitors are doing. I want to be able to offer something unique. Like I was talking about Verizon, uh, they partner, they are partnered with Snapchat so they can install, pre, they're going to pre-install Snapchat on some of those 5G network phones. So in other words, a 5G network. So that's being an innovator. That's trying to offer something that another competitor might not have. That their competitors may not have. Their competitor, Apple. Uh, their competitor, uh, competitor uh, Cricket, Boost Mobile. Those are their competitors. You have Verizon, you have Boost Mobile, you have Cricket, you have uh, T-Mobile, you have uh, Apple iPhones. So in other words, if Verizon can offer something that's unique that the other competitors, cell phone competitors are not offering, then Verizon may be able to draw in Verizon may be able to draw in more customers. So these are the blooms I usually so it's the first time I bought a big bag like this, but I keep these because you know I see I like to keep these in my background. These are all, you know, I like to keep all my balloons in the background. So Thanks for joining me today, class. And uh, I want to say thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate you joining me today, class. And um, so, um, yeah, so I said um, I want to keep up with the trends in the market. So, um, you know, I need that. Uh, I need those computer information systems. I need my customers, my uh, employees need. They need this. They need a. Uh, they need a client computer. They need so they can access the server. They might be able to. They might want to. Um, they might want to share file. So they want to share database file. So they can access uh, the database from the client. You know the client computer. So like I said, I want to be able to keep up with the trends in the market with that information system or uh, the systems. My employees can have their system, and I have mine. And a manager will have his. So we can pull in that much needed information. We can keep up with the trends in the market. We need to make decisions on a day to day basis. Or what are we going to be doing five years from now in our business? What are our goals? What are our hopes? What are our dreams for our business? Uh, do we want to uh, build a new wing? Do we want to build a new branch? Do we want to hire more employees? Do we want to expand our product line? We need information to make decisions, vital decisions on all types of things. Uh, what are our accounts receivables? Our accounts payables? Are they uh, our, are our um, revenues exceeding our expenses, or, or are our expenses exceeding our revenues? Are our assets uh, exceeding our liabilities, or are our liabilities exceeding our assets? So we have to know, you know, revenues minus expenses. That is what is on the income statement. Assets minus liabilities, assets equals liabilities, plus assets equals liabilities, plus owner's equity. So I misspoke before, but it's assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. That's on the balance sheet. So those are the things that I must do, and that is those are the things that my accounting department will handle 
at the end of the accounting cycle. So uh, information, all that is information. You add your uh, accounts receivables, accounts payables, your revenue, your expenses, your accrued expenses, your salary, uh, salaries payable, wages payable. Uh, uh, we have depreciation, depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation. All of that is information that goes on our statements, our income statements, our balance sheets, our statement of owner's equity. We need all that information. That is information that's coming from our organization. We have our financial accounting. So we, you know, that has to be done because that paperwork has to be done. Your balance sheets, statement of owner's equity, and your uh, income statement. So those are the things that has to be done because uh, uh, what you call um, auditors, credit unions, banks, and uh, credit unions, banks, auditors, SEC, uh, security exchange, Securities Exchange Commission, they may need that information. But managerial accounting is not mandatory like financial accounting is. So in other words, manager, managerial accounting is uh, information you need within your organization, and you can do that as you see fit. But it's good to do your information so you can keep up with. It's good to do your, you know, your uh, manager your accounting uh, statements internally. That way you can keep on with how well, keep up with how well the company is doing. How well are we doing? How um, did we pay all our accounts? Have all our accounts payables been paid? Have we received all our accounts receivables? Do we have um? Do we have everything we need? We have all. We have enough inventory. We have uh, We have enough. We, we have enough employees. So how are our customers doing? Are they satisfied? So we need to do our. Do we need to uh, look look into our email marketing? Do we need to look into uh, other marketing strategies? Uh, what about our sales funnels? Uh, did you know? Did any of our uh, customers, uh, pro pro I wouldn't say projected, but I would say prospect. Is it, did any of our prospective uh, customers enter our sales funnel? So, so in other words, they enter the sales funnel and at the end, they may end up purchasing. So how's our website doing? Is our website uh, attracting new customers? Uh, you know, so a lot of things to think about, you know, then you have to make sure you hire the right people. You hire the right people that don't bring down your culture. How's the culture in your organization? You got to create a positive corporate culture. I did that on one of my other videos. Uh, starting a business, you need your business name. You get your business, you get your business name. You get your business license. You get your business, you know, check on the license and licensing. Uh, well, I wouldn't say qualifications, but uh, I would say licensing, uh, check on your licensing. Well, I mean, you know, the things that you need to do to get your license. In other words, you need a license, you need a business license. What state are you in? You can go to a website, I believe it's, uh, I don't know, it's, I guess, you know, you just type in, you probably go to Google and type it in, and they give you a website for your, they give you the website for your state. In other words, because you're going to need a business license. But, Sometimes you don't need a business license if you, uh, depending on if you want to, I think if you're selling, if you're dealing in food, you know, I, I pretty, pretty much believe that you will need a business license. But what I've been told is that if you make $400 or more, that's when you definitely have to, you know, you have to file your taxes. So, I mean, I guess it's good to get a business license so you can be, you know, you can be legal, legitimate. So, but sometimes you can't do those things until you're ready. So, in other words, a business license, you want to run a business, you have your business name. You, you don't want to choose a name that somebody else may have. So, it's good too, I guess, to get, you know, get your license, get your business license. I had my business license, but I, I shut it down because uh, it was just too much. Sometimes if you're not ready, don't venture out there and, you know, spend all that money. Because Legal Zoom, they were charging me 600 And then that was just for the name. Then I had to get an operating uh, license. I had to get an operating license. I had to get um, 
Uh, then they told me I might have to get a couple other licenses. Then I had to talk to the health department because I was doing, I was going to sell, I was going to market some uh, uh, hair products. But the company was going to make them. It's a company, Wholesale Natural Body Care. What they do, they make products and she make them up. But she do her own soaps and all that. So she do that. And she'll make them up and then she'll send you the bottle uh, with the products in them. But you just put your, your business name, your business label on the front. So that's a good thing to do. But um, I think I would get into something like retail. I would like to market, uh, you know, Nike t-shirts. Uh, maybe Nike socks, Nike t-shirts, Nike uh, uh, headbands and stuff like that. You know, retail. I don't want to deal in making hair products because you you know you have to have a proper spot for that because they can they have to make sure your place is clean you don't have any roaches and mice and all that so so retail to me I don't have to worry about I shouldn't have to worry about all that so I would rather do the retail with t-shirts and the socks and the headbands and stuff like that to that nature so like I said if you want to get your business license. Uh, it's, to me I feel if you're not ready and you don't have the proper funding. There is no need to go all the way out and get a business license because you might figure out, you might uh, realize two weeks later that you can't make it in business and you don't want to be in that business. So I think what I think is the best way to do it is get your name, choose your name. Um, you can always do a Google search and make sure no one else has that name. And then uh, get your inventory. You know, just get don't get a whole lot of inventory because... Uh, as uh, everything Ebony was saying, she has her own little website, and uh, really, I learned a lot from her website too. And uh, everything Ebony and uh, uh, Jazz Anya, they're very two nice young ladies that I looked at their videos on YouTube, and I learned a whole lot. And I do have a business degree, but sometimes having a degree don't make you an expert. So I still, I'm still learning, and I still need to learn. So right now, I'm just, uh, you know, I shut my business down. So what I'm doing now is just building my brand with my YouTube channel for right now. So I do expect to go back into uh, uh, my business ventures probably in the next month or couple months or so. But not right now. I see maybe around the summertime. And I like I like ladies' pocket books too. I like the Nike t-shirts, Nike headbands, Nike socks, Nike t-shirts, and ladies' pocket books. And I also like some, um, you know, men t-shirts and stuff like that. You know, retail items. So I might check back with that later. But like I said, dealing with a business, uh, sometimes it's good to write a, do you a business plan, write a business plan, write a business plan, and um, so start out with that plan, and you have to plan, because you have to know where, where are you going to operate your business, is it just going to be online, uh, is it just going to be online, you have, you have your business name, you got, you know, your target market. You got to build your brand, and sometimes that takes time. So it's good just to do your uh, research. So do some research before you get started. I know a lot of people started their business, and they're doing, they are doing very well. But uh, So I think that's all for the day class. So do your research. You want to start your business. Do your research and do some extensive research. And, and sometimes YouTube helps too because, you can go in there and see what some of these other businesses are doing. Benchmark. Benchmark. As I've always been talking about. Benchmark. You can see what other companies are doing. And um, that's what I do. I go on YouTube and I benchmark. And I see what other YouTube channels are doing. And how they are presenting themselves. And so. Uh, that's what I do. And I get ideas. But sometimes you can look at other people's ideas. And their business ideas. And their store ideas. And their YouTube channels. But. It's always good to have your own ideas and make you feel good about having your own ideas <coughs> and the way you set things up. You'll be proud of yourself instead of copying someone else's uh, ideas. You can look at someone else's ideas and get some inspiration, but everybody to me, uh, I believe everybody to me, everyone has a story to tell. So tell your story. The best that you see fit in your own words, in your own way, you know. So I said, my, uh, I had uh, some people trying to give me some ideas about my channel, but I was like, you know, 
I don't mind looking at other people's channels and all that, but I have my own ideas of how I want to set mine up. I want to con how I want to set mine up, the content I want to provide on my channel. So there's nothing wrong with uh, getting being inspired by someone else's channel, but we all have a story to tell, and all we have to do is, in my opinion, dig down deep, dig a little deeper, and I'm quite sure you can come up with some extraordinary ideas for your channel and for your business too, or your business. So well, when I get ready to get down into my business. I'm going to make sure I plan the second time around. I want to plan the second time around a little much better. A little bit better than I did the first time. I want to dig down in my soul and pull out something valuable, something with perfection out of that bag and say, hey, her business is lit. Her, <laughs> her business is the bomb, you know. You know, from your logos, your name, your inventory, you have, you know, you have everything you need. So, research is the key. So, class, I want to say thanks for joining me today. And I love my balloons. As you can see, I love my balloons. So, thanks for joining me today. And I hope to see you back here. Same place, same time, same channel. I love my little pink balloons. Same place, same channel, uh, County for real. So, I want to say, you know, you all have a good one. Have a good one, y'all. Yay, yay.